Let's focus on creating a jitter chart here, but with two tips included. So let's start to look at doing this. So let's start to look at our jitter radar chart here, or at least how we're going to create one with two tips. So the first thing what we need to have here is of course a border template, which you can find here when you go to chartgestry.com, getting started, just scroll down and copy this chunk of code here. Now I want to convert this into a radar chart. It's quite straightforward, it's just in here. And then we have to remove the scales here. Save that, refresh, there we are. So the biggest problem here is basically these dots here regarding to their position. And the reason why is that we have these lines that is basically the baseline of the positioning here. But what happens if you want to put it here or there or somewhere else? It becomes more tricky. So we're going to work on that. Let's first remove all of these items here, or at least the background here and this borderline here. So what I can say here, we can say here, fill equals false to remove the background color and we have to make sure that there's a comma here there you are that's number one secondly what i want to move is the lines here i'm going to say here show line equals false say there we are so now we have only these dots so that's the first thing here i can remove this border with here or just leave it in there and for now i'm going to just get a well i leave the colors in here for now just leave it like that all right, so now we have this, but what I want to do here is what, I, what if we have another item here? So I'm going to copy this. Let's do that one first, comma, there we are. And then I'm going to remove one of these colors. So one will be red and the other one will be blue color. Let's save that, refresh. There you are. And then I notice that the blue color here needs to grab this and put it in here. So now it's of course it's hard to spot because they are exactly on top of each other. So I'm going to just do here some random numbers for now. Three, 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 all right. So now we have them spread all over. However, this is not what I want. So how do I solve this? Well, there will be some tricks. I'm going to use as much possible tricks here to make it work. So the first thing what I want to do is, because we're working with a radial scale, and as I indicated, these angle lines are basically determined for the dots. Because of this, I need to use it in my advantage because it's a restriction right now. So how can we use this in our advantage? Well, remember, we're working with a circle. So then we're going to say a constant and I'm going to make this an array of 360. And you probably guess what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make not only six angle lines here, I'm going to make here 360 lines. So let's start to work on that. So I'm going to do here very simple. And I'm going to make here a uh, for each loop, or sorry, a for loop. So we say here, uh, let i equals, and I'll put here number one. And then we're going to say here, I'm going to loop as long as this here will be equal to 360. And then we say here, uh, what is it, i plus plus, incremental increase. So once we did that, I'm going to say here this array dot push, and what we're going to push in here is the i value so if i save this refresh there you are of course nothing happens yet because i need to put this now into our labels since the labels is an array as well we can put this array in here save that there we are now we have a full circle and we can control all the positioning nicely with a 360 degree angle absolutely phenomenal so now what i want to do of course is because they becomes more tricky because you can see here these numbers here and they will just start at angle one or degree number one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have only six or seven points. So how can I get this, for example, here at number 271 or number 180 or number 90? Well, to do this, what I'm going to do here is some additional tricks again. So what I want to do is I want to create now a new array and that's the only restriction here. We're going to create another array, but this array will have a data set. We're going to give this the name of data set number one. And we can probably do this again here on data set number two. Let's do both of them immediately. So then I'll just put in here the value of one as of now. Save that, refresh, and you can see here it pushes this, but then of course I need to copy this and put it in here for data set one. And I'm going to copy this and say here data set number two. And we'll say here this is blue and up is red. Save, refresh. 
Now, as you can see here, we get this here. So if I make this number uh, two, you should see here a difference. All right, that's interesting. Of course, now we get some of these restricted issues here. Don't worry, we're going to cover these. However, what is happening here, first of all, is the min-man value. It starts at whatever the minimum value is, in this case, number one. And the max value is the highest value in here. So I don't want that. I want to control the max and min values. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to work with the scales, but this is the radial scale. So that's how we're going to use the R for radial. And then in here, I'm going to put in a few items. First of all, I will say here, begin at zero, and this will be equal to true. So if I save this, refresh, now we start at zero in here. And the max value right now is number two, which is the highest value. So what I want to do now is just say a max number 10. And of course you can do higher and higher, depending on how deep you want to. If you do this on, let's say 100, you have full control on exactly every coordinate in here in a very easy way. You can see here, if you want to have 95, do hit here. And you can later on do here, let's say num number 95. Let's do one here. Um, even in here, let's say 95, save that, refresh, you can see here it hits 95. But of course, this is like a full entire loop, so I don't want that. So I'm going to solve that later on. So um, what we can do here as well, these lines, I'm going to hide them later on, and later on we're going to hide as well all of these numbers. So they have no value for us anymore. So what I'm going to do here is, in here, I'm going to work with a new data basically i need to create a data with multiple values what i do want to show because you can see here this is not what i want to show imagine i have one value that's at 90 and degree of number one and then etc etc i'm going to select all of these right so what we're going to do here we're going to create a constant and I'm going to say here data sets number one coordinates so that will be the coordinates and we basically have two coordinates in this uh, array what do we have? Well, first of all, we're going to work with the angle, which is the degree, or we can say even the degrees, uh, degrees or angle, whatever, whatever you want here. Yes. And then we're going to say here, let's say we start with, if I want to have one on number one here, and we have to calculate what more, uh, number one, let's say number 90, etc., etc. So we're going to say first degree is number one, is a, is a starting point. What we need to do, and this is very important, because we're working with an index. Remember, an array has index zero. This number one is not, it's degree number one, but in reality, it's index zero. This is index one. So this degree here needs to be recalculated into zero later on, or minus one. We'll do that later on as a value. And then next, what we want to do is here to indicate the value. So if I want to be here on the first angle, or first degree, and I want to say number 60, you can say here value 60. Let's put a comma here and let's get some random numbers. All right, so then I'm going to say here, this will be, let's say here 30, and you have another one is 45, and then we have 90, and at 90 we're getting here, and if I go to 180, I'm going to say here 180, and the other one here will be 270. So we have the value of 60, that's fine, it will be probably somewhere there, but maybe we're going to do 130, another 133, another 190, and another one uh, 120, and then we have another one here, 66. Let's save that, refresh. Nothing happens yet, but what we need to do now is start to uh, make a loop for this, or at least a um, way, like a for each loop, to calculate this then we can change our data sets here nicely. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get here our data sets coordinates, say dot, and I'm going to say here for each loop. We're going to loop through every item here. Then we can say here, this will have a shorthand of coordinate and index, although I don't believe we need index, but just in case. I'm going to put in here the uh, arrow function expression, and then in here, what we're going to do here is basically this. Because we have our numbers here, and what we really want to do here is the following. So let me just show you before I even get ahead of myself. If I say data set, and then we're going to say here the data set, and we're going to put in here, if I say here angle 90, it should be 89. And then we're going to say here will be equal. And that's basically what we're doing on a systematic basis here, calculating everything. And this has value 60. 
If I save this, refresh, you can see here now one has a value of 60. So this works nicely. And you can see here it's on 91 here. Maybe we should start with a zero degree here instead of one. And maybe that will work even better. Let's see. That makes far more sense. I guess then we don't even have to deduct it by one. So then we don't even have to do that. That's even interesting. So anyway, let's keep it like that. Then, so now we have this here and this is the uh, item here like that. Am I correct or if I or do I need to probably have to put in here 90 just to be exactly on the center here we can just test it by saying 100 and see if we hit that number. All right so this is all fine now so we don't have to even deduct it by 1 for the array because it's really, uh, we can recalculate that or at least it's been calculated already in it. So what I'm going to do now is just going to copy this. Then what I want to do here is I'm going to put in this value here of that, but then I'm going to grab this. I'm going to say here we're going to get the dot degree. And then we get here the value. So we have the coordinate dot value. And then if I save this, let's delete this one. Save this, refresh, and you can see here now it's spreading over. However, we still have here this huge chunk of data. So what I'm going to do here is now a nice trick because chart.js allows this and will remove the values like this. If you do now, they are not anymore recognized as a value and that's absolutely wonderful. And, and I'm just wondering what happened to that item there. Do we have one? Oh, as you can see here, we're over the 100. So let's say 100 should be more than sufficient. There we are. All right, so now we have that spread out. What I want to do next is do another one. We can do, of course, the exact same thing here with the other item. We can just do another constant here. And this will be number two. And then I'm going to change the degree here. Um, let's say here, this will be 270. And this one will be 300. And this will be 245, 290, 280. And then this one will be um, 330. Let's save that copy the new item here with this. So what I'm going to do here, exactly the same. Although basically you could merge them together, I guess, but that's all right. I'll just leave it for now as it is. Then grab the data set number two, or it's already in there. Refresh, and you can see here now we're spreading out and we get these items here. So now we have this here. And of course, what we want to do is we want to remove these tick labels here and maybe the excess of dots of the lines here because that's just too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and going to say here comma and then what I'm going to do here is the angle lines and here for the angle line you're going to say a display equals false save refresh. Now we remove the lines and that looks just a bit more better. Now we have to remove all of these numbers here because they're not necessary for our users. So I'm going to say comma here I'm going to say here the point labels. Let's remove these point labels. Let me say display false. Save this, refresh, and there you are. And now we have a nice spread out item here with a beautiful tooltip included.